but it was still in structure a democracy. And that meant liberals and unions and free speech and a free opposition. And the German leaders knew, as Frederick and Bismarck and the Kaiser had known, that you can't start ruthless aggression abroad without ruthless discipline at home. Therefore, the time had come for the Republic to be eliminated. To achieve this, they needed a tool with which to appeal to the Germans' old passion for superiority and conquest. Not a feudal monarch this time, like Frederick, nor an aristocratic landowner like Bismarck, nor an emperor like the Kaiser, but an ex-corporal of the German army, with a fanatic gleam in his eye and the power to arouse a mob. Preaching the same old doctrine as his predecessors, the old doctrine that had never failed to arouse the German people. Himself jobless, uneducated, cowardly, resentful, Hitler gathered around him misfits like himself, people obsessed with grievances, real or imaginary, people who weren't as prominent as they thought they should be, people with inferiority complexes who wanted to shout with a crowd, people who wanted power but were too lazy to work for it, sheep anxious to be led, dope addicts, perverts, bullies, cranks. Unfortunately, those Germans who were liberally minded regarded Hitler as either a joke or a nuisance. But the German nationalists well knew his possibilities. They knew that he was capable of administering the death blow to the German Republic, of forging the German people into a single mold. Backed by the militarists who saw in him their chance to build a mighty war machine, backed by the monarchists, who saw in him their chance to restore the Hohenzollerns to the throne, backed by big business, who saw in him their chance at economic domination of the world, backed by thousands of ordinary Germans, who saw in him their chance to strut as conquerors across the world. With the backing of all these groups, Hitler soared ahead, skillfully appealing to the German tradition, the old cry of the master race, the Nazis promised all things to all men. To the workers, they promised higher wages. To the employers, lower wages. To the tenants, they promised lower rents. To the landlords, higher rents. To the farmer, higher prices. To the consumer, lower prices. But most of all, they promised revenge on the world, that Germany would become its most powerful empire. Hitler, to his audience, and by 1933, the Nazis received more votes than any other political party. And von Hindenburg installed Hitler as its leader, as German chancellor. This was the death blow the nationalists had planned. From that moment, the German Republic was dead. Four weeks later, the Nazis set fire to the Reichstag and screamed that the crime had been committed by the communists. Using this as an excuse, Hitler declared a state of emergency and assume dictatorial powers. From this, it was only a step to the abolition of all political parties. In the new Reichstag, there was only one party, Hitler's party. In the new Reichstag, there was no debate. The deputies were stooges who applauded, got paid, went home. Trade unions were abolished. Instead, the German labor front to discipline the workers and teach them what to think. Music, literature, all outlawed or destroyed, unless it supported what the German leaders were trying to sell. Scientists, physicians, their professions were banned to them unless they supported the Nazi ideology. Bismarck had added the industrialist as the fourth pillar of the warlike state. Hitler added a fifth, the professional gangsters armed thugs to enforce his decrees. And as the German officer had been the ideal of the Kaiser's Germany, the stormtrooper became the idol of Hitler's. Persecution was on the march. Freedom of speech? Now that meant the concentration camp. Torture. Death. Freedom of religion? Riots and church burnings. Freedom of opinion? the executioner and his acts. Freedom of the press? The Gestapo took care of that. 
Now Carl Schmidt could be indoctrinated like his father and his grandfather before him. But this time, even more thoroughly, more efficiently, with all the resources of science in the modern state. The German press became a Nazi press. The German airwaves open only to Nazi voices. Nazi papers, Nazi books, Nazi pamphlets. These were all the people could read. Nazi speeches, Nazi dramas, Nazi music. These were all the people could hear. The art of Germany, the sculpture, the paintings, the drama, all regimented to serve one purpose, the indoctrination of Carl Schmidt. One voice only must be heard by Carl Schmidt. One voice from the cradle to the grave. The voice of Hitler. 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 Scores of microphones and cameras were used to photograph Hitler and record his voice so that all of Germany and others throughout the world could receive his message of hate and hypocrisy. So Hitler was photographed from the front, from the back, from the right, from the left, from every angle. Hitler, Hitler, Hitler. Hitler sobbing, Hitler smiling, Hitler shouting, Hitler working his people into a frenzy. <laughs> In my schools, a youth will grow up before which the world will shrink back. There must be no tenderness in youth. I want to see in their eyes the gleam of the beast of prey. Brutality is respected. I shall spread terror. Today, Germany. Tomorrow, the world. That's how Carl Schmidt got his soul. That's how the general staff, the big industrialists, the state officials, the landowners, the gangster chieftains put their plans into effect and prepared Carl Schmidt for his generation's attempt to smash the world into submission. That's how Carl Schmidt was trained for conquest, just as his father was trained by the leaders of his generation and his father before him. Each generation accepting and adding to the German tradition, the tradition of ruthlessness, and medieval barbarism, the tradition of a master race, the tradition of German superiority, a false picture of the world inside German heads. These are some of the explanations for the murdered Poles in Lublin, the murdered Italians in Rome, the murdered Belgians at Bandai, the murdered Americans at Malmedy. And these are the reasons why in our generation nearly 30 million men have had to die. <laughs>